back. Today we are continuing through element five of your life book, which is optimizing your surroundings. So we're actually going to be doing pages 137 to 142. And these subtopics are your social consciousness, consciousness and improving your relationship. So diving right in. Okay. So now that we've started to self-regulate, right? And we consider how we're going to respond when we're angry or sad or joyful, right? You're in a position to learn and be aware of how other people's emotions and what's going on inside of them. Okay. This is really an incredibly important shift, right? When you can truly reach out and seek to understand others, you are going to find that even those that aren't ready to make a change to themselves, that they're going to be more inclined to support you if they feel that their perspective is validated, right? You're not agreeing, but you're listening to understand. So this is a key habit of health here, okay? To listen with the desire to understand, okay? So listening is not something that we learn and it's not something that we do naturally, right? We are much better um, at being transmitters of information. So here's here's a quick um, thing that, that we learned in the Habits of Health book that actually said, when someone is talking to us, how much do you think is communicated through their actual words? How much do you think is communicated through their tone of voice? And how much through the body language? Think about that for one second. And then I'll tell you the answers. <laughs> okay. Through actual words, 7%. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, 7% through your actual words. Tone of voice, 38%. Body language, 55%. Wow. So, so body posture and tone can give us such a powerful insight into what others are thinking. And really that can go a long way to avoid those potential confrontations and stress and ah, otherwise unhealthy outcomes. Okay, so this is why it's better just to discuss something that's important rather than using a text or email, which most of us know anyway. But, you know, sometimes we will read something or, you know, from a text or an email and we get rattled or we're like, ah, what are they what are they talking about? Well, those words are seven percent. <laughs> Right. So just keep that in your mind. So Dr. A actually gives us an assignment in this book and he asks us to make a decision to listen to what someone else is communicating until they're completely done. OK, so imagine having a conversation and so many times someone's talking and you're like, I'm going to respond. I know the answer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, he said to really make a conscious effort to not to even think about how you're going to respond. Just pay attention to what they're saying. And until that last syllable is done, then to begin formulating your response. Listen, it's not easy. <laughs> okay. But, but let's work on that. Okay. So try to have one, one of those times this week. Okay. Or even today, why wait for the week right today? Cause it happens all the time. Listen to someone and don't respond. And then when they're done, think, respond. And actually when you respond, replay to them what you heard them say, because that's interesting. Okay. Write down any examples of how your conversation um, is actually changed. <laughs> okay. Or if it's improving your relationships. All right. So the next thing that Dr. A talks about is one of the critical roles to optimizing relationships. And that is to become better at managing the difficult ones. <laughs> Okay, so these conversations are usually filled with drama, excessive stress, right? They sabotage us frequently, right? I'm not saying the other person is, right? the conversations are, because these are the ones that we typically have with some family members or bosses or coworkers or anyone that actually frequents the drama triangle, all right? So, and if we can improve these interactions, it's going to go a long way to keep life from, you know, the life from getting in the way of our day-to-day -day interactions. Okay, so Dr. Ray talks about avoiding traps um, in this part of the element. And this is when a well-meaning person makes your favorite desserts and expects us to eat it. And it's important now that we use our new skills to address this, okay? So remember that um, the, the person that's offering something that they made because they know that you love it. It's an expression of love or it's a gift, right? 
And they may not have that same mindset as you. So, so the best thing that you can do is to politely explain why you're choosing not to eat it. You know, depending on who it is, if it's a parent, a sibling, you know, somebody you're related to, you can give them a big hug, tell them you appreciate the thought, right? Um, you say thank you. Um, I will give you a personal example. My mother-in-law, I think 90-year-old um, Cuban lady, <laughs> um, she loves to make cookies. Now, we have her not making cookies anymore. She finally got that. But, but she would make cookies every day. Every day she would make one pan of cookies, 12 or 16, whatever she could fit on there. And um, every day, Katie, cookies, have some cookies because she knows I love the cookies. And no matter what I said about how I didn't want them and blah, 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 she kept making the cookies. So I tried to, well, she came to, you don't like my cookies. And then it was this big drama. You don't like my cookies. How come you don't like my cookies? You used to like my cookies. <laughs> so finally, what I said was, ah, oh, you know what? I don't eat cookies. And she was like, you don't eat cookies? I said, I, no, I don't eat cookies. She was like, Huh. Hmm. Okay. You don't eat cookies. <laughs> and that was it. So find a way um, to help that other person who is, because she had the best intentions. She loves me. She was not trying to help me gain 80 pounds again. Right. She just really, she knew that I really loved her cookies, right? Who wouldn't? They're full of sugar shortening and everything else. That's not good for you. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, that's just a, um, just an example, um, that I was able to work through. So that's it for today. So tomorrow we are going to talk about our environment and actually how it shapes, how it shapes our daily behavior Fun stuff. All right. So thank you for joining me today. As we continue through element five of our life book, you know, the drill, <laughs> please feel free, like comment, share the post. If you know somebody who do you think this would serve, send it to them, right? Hop on over to our YouTube channel called Healthy and Vibrant. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.